game number two between Poland and Ukraine. All the way to the top left, we have the starting player for Poland. It is Liquid's Mana. Mana here taking down Dimaga in the first game, and now he goes up against the second Zerg player. Since the Ukraine has decided to not send out Cast just yet, he's going to be the third player if need be. All the way to the bottom right, we have instead Bly. Bly is attempting to take on his uh, Poros opponent and, uh, yeah, well, succeed where Dimaga, unfortunately for the Ukraine, failed. So it's another Zerg versus Poros. And let's find out if Bly can tie up the series or if Mana is going to take the 2 0 here against his opponent. Looking all the way to the top left, we have the young Polish player. And of course, every Polish fan that is currently watching this game is only thinking about one thing. Napierdalaj mana, davaj, davaj. That's what people are probably just shouting at the television all the way back at home. I hope that everybody has a few beers and a bit of popcorn ready because this is going to be a treat. Not only our second game here, but also the entire series that we are currently watching. Spawning pool first for the Zerg player to the bottom right and all the way to the top left. We have an uh, opening with the gateway once again. Exactly what we, uh, yeah, what we saw in uh, the first game. So let's see what he can do with that. We have right now the uh, Zerglings being built for Bly and actually he is... Did he... What kind of pool did he start with? Like I'm a bit surprised. He apparently was a 12 pool. Started things off with a 12 pool. I thought that he started with a normal one but in he didn't so my apologies for missing that. Goes into a 12 pool and starts with the Zerglings to rush them across the map. Of course we have for mana by now also a pylon there. And uh, well with that, well the pylon itself doesn't really matter but I want to say that it's the main base. He has nothing on the low ground, which is super, super important here. And that's, of course, one of the most... Like, this is really important. If he has a pile on the low ground and, let's say, a gateway of Forge Cybernetics, he's going to lose that. He might be supplier blocked. Everything being in the main base makes it a little bit easier to defend it, especially with a Sim City like this. But this is still going to be a lot of aggression by uh, by uh, Bly. And Mana is trying to block his opponent's expansion with the pile, but the Zerglings are already there to take that on. And once that's gone, they will drop that hatch. Ling's already in the main base of Mana, and Bly really going for the aggression here. I mean, he wants to take his opponent down as fast as he can and wants to get a lead in the Harvest account. For now, we have 19 to 10, and that's, of course, a big, big, big problem here for Bly. But whoa! Mana loses his Zealot early on, and that's a big problem here. So right now we have the Zerglings rushing in, trying to kill a few of those probes and they might get that chance. The Mothership Core is being built, but so far Mana lost only a single one. He only lost one. One probe and nothing else. The Zalat is pushing the Zerglings back. And despite the fact that we do not have an expansion for mm -hmm. Mana just yet, we have a situation where everything else is gonna go fine. So... Uh, yeah, we have him with good harvest account. Someone unfortunately lagging in this game. We don't really know who that is, but Bly is of course very unhappy about it, and I don't blame him. He plays a strategy that relies heavily on him not being distracted by anything like that. So, uh, not quite sure who that is. Of course, nobody wants to admit it. So apparently Bly is just going on, but we have quite a few observers in the game. Could be anybody, I guess. So the Mothership Core already on the way, and that kind of puts an end to it. That puts an end to what we saw from Bly's aggression. That base down here is being built, and the only question that remains is how fast will Mana be able to get his own natural up, and will Bly really be able to close that gap in the Harvest account? It's 15 to 20, and he needs, of course, a bit more than that. He needs, yeah, well, he needs to get his lava mechanics into uh, the game so that he can really just build more and more drones. And he's doing exactly that now. Mana has been using quite a lot of energy for the uh, Chrono Boost against the Stargate. Ah, uh, yeah, that stock has to be very, very careful or he won't be able to survive. He's still trying to take down that Overlord, but not able to achieve that. We have the probes helping out for now. Mothership Core, Stalkers and Zalad are pushing everything back. Another Harvester, two additional Harvesters have been killed here. And the Zergling is just trying to run away, but that should not be possible. No mana already with one probe uh, parked right over here. Blocking that gap, very, very well done. Great defense by Mana, no question about that. Three Harvesters killed against ten Zerglings, and of course the early pool that we saw by Bly, which made him skip a few of his Harvesters as well. And as you can see, we have four Mana at the natural, the Nexus now also starts. But Bly goes straight into the third base, and he's currently taking the lead in overall supply, going up to 33, taking double gas now. 
And we have in his main base, both of those guys are taken. Doesn't take a single one at the natural. The harvest account is starting to get better and better for him. He's really starting to take the lead here. And Mana, he couldn't get any tech into the game just yet. He's on the way to get the warp tech uh, technology. Keep in mind that the tech for Bly is, in general, very, very late now. He doesn't have gas, he doesn't have speed, there's no circling speed, no tech into lair. All these things are, are things that he doesn't have and that he won't have in quite some time. We have for Mana now a double gateway at the font. And another gateway in the main base, that's four, five gates already in total and he's not gonna stop there, he's gonna drop another one in just a second. And that means we're gonna see aggression. He wants to go and punish his opponent. Bly is heading into the Roach War now, but he won't have Roach speed. And Mana is going to have a lot of gateway units for this. So, looking at the uh, bottom of the map, we have for the natural. We have quite a few mineral patches without being mined at all. And 27 harvesters only against 38. All the way to the bottom right. Let's see how exactly it's going to turn out for Mana. Already dropping uh, the pile on there. And with that pile on here in particular, as long as it's not scouted, he will be able to just swap in units all day long. All the way to the bottom of the map. What else do we have there? We have the base not saturated at the third. We have now Boro being started. And that's a great upgrade for him to have. As there is no detection for Mana. So if he is able to make it work with a Boro upgrade and save his units. That would be amazing. But the problem for Bly really is that Mana is currently looking at a 20 supply army. And that's a very strong army at that. Starting to move in already. And with this he should at least be able to take down the third. I do not think that Bly is even going to try and attempt to protect this because he would expose his units quite a lot but he does he's actually trying to move in those four skills let's see what they are actually cutting off a lot of the well two of the roaches and a few of the zerglings are being cut off here with decent micro he should be able to make that work the first queen goes down the second one is being attacked as well and Bly is starting to lose a few of his units but at the same time mana is also starting to fall behind in army supply but with a nice time warp he's trapping the roaches again takes down at least two of them and more slogs are being warped in that gives mana quite some momentum that he can use to take down that third base fly still going for the defense but he's just tickling in with his units trickling in one unit after another and they are all just welcomed by that Prolos army and taken out the hatch is dying as well and looking at this we have fly now in serious trouble the Ukraine lost already one Zerg player. They might lose another one. So far, Bly is still overall in the lead on supply. His army supply is at 43 against 34, but he has only a few roaches there. Mana is not happy about that lag either. I don't think anybody is, ha is happy about that lag. So, uh, yeah, let's hope that they can find out who that is, because that is starting to get a bit annoying. Seller is like, all right, I'm going to try and uh, leave the game. Maybe it is me. And uh, yeah, and Mana is actually correct about that. Someone must be lagging that was not in the previous game. So, because the last game was running very, very smooth, there was no problem whatsoever. Might be somebody that was not in game one that is now causing trouble. So, currently, uh, we have Sella trying uh, out if he might be the problem here. And at the same time, now Mana once again moving in. Four skills here for a nice time of here, closing that gap. And Bly is starting to push his opponent back, but it's only Lings and Roaches and all of those units without speed. Not even Ling speed has been started. The only advantage that Bly has is that Boro upgrade. Mana is warping in a few additional Zalats for the front two of the sentries taken out. That's going to limit those false fields in the long run. The harvest account for Mana by now is at 34. He's starting to probe it up again. And he took down that third base, which was quite the important step. Overall, in uh, worker supply, he is very low already. But we have now 30 of the speed upgrade started for Bly's Roaches. Not for the Zerklings, that's already certain. We also have that third base restarted by him. A nice block with the Overlord and the Creep Spread all the way to the top. So this will deny Mana's third base for a bit. And he also just lost his second pylon on the low ground. Uh, all the way down here at the bottom of the map. Which means that we are having him supply blocked just for a few seconds. That overlord that was blocking the uh, third base for mana has also been eliminated now. And if you just look at the resources lost, we have now 3,200 versus, versus 2,500. Mana really focusing now on his economy. Chrono boosting, particularly uh, the robotics facility to get not only the observer out there, but then of course it's going to be important to have a few uh, yeah, models in the game so that he can start to uh, take down the roaches. Because roaches, that's what we currently see for Bly. But... 
Bly is a pretty sneaky bastard. This guy is going straight into a spire if he makes the transition into Mutalisk work without mana having a blink and nothing set up in the main base. He could do quite some damage even with a small number of Mutalisks. Whereas now the fourth and the third base are being built for Bly. So Bly is still overall in decent shape, looking at 98, uh, nearly 100 overall supply, 86 for mana. The third base, losing that was of course a bit of a blow, but still, this is yeah, this is still a bit tricky. So to the top left we have at this point, let's have another look uh, first of all at the army supply. 49 against 39 in favor of mana. We have mu the plus one attack upgrade now started for the uh, air units and speed upgrade for the zerglings is on the way too. The observer is of course going to try and find out what exactly is happening at the bottom of the map and that means third base, fourth base. The problem also is that, at least for mana, <laughs> that Bly is a very good creep spread and that's going to help him with the defense. Uh -huh, roaches are moving in but yeah, they're pretty careful here because that would have been their demise if they would have just been detected by those units. The double immortal that is going to do quite a lot of damage. What's also going to do a lot of damage are those roaches moving in and trying to take that out. Photonova charge has been used and the roaches are starting to move back for just a few seconds but they could try and snipe that next and I think that's exactly what they're going to do here. The fourth base down here has been eliminated by Mana. Mana doesn't even care about his natural. Apparently he wants to finish it with those units. The probes are moving in as well trying to block the roaches off at least for now. Mana needs to run the warp ins all the way in his natural if he wants to accomplish that. You also have the robotics now with the first immortal. The mutalists, they are gonna give Mana quite a lot of trouble in the later run of this game. But Mana is now splitting his force, taking down that third and going straight for that natural two, taking down the reinforcements. Light 125 supply using units now in the main base to take his opponent on. Quite a couple of stalkers that Mana already has here for the defense against the Mutalist, but the Roaches, they are of course threatening everything here. 21 Harvesters have already been killed. We have 13 killed by Bly, oh uh, sorry by Mana, and well all those stalkers there, there might be a nice a nice try but they are with their, yeah, they are backed up into a corner and all the way to the bottom of the map we now have another base being eliminated. Bly is gonna lose this hatch for certain, he has another one set up to the left side though and Mana is really starting to run a bit out of options. We have him with 47 against 51 army supply but the Mutalists alone are just mobile enough to run or fly circles around that Protoss player's army. Another move into the top, yeah, another move actually into the uh, bottom right. We have the lair in just a few seconds being taken out, but let's have a quick look at the uh, exact numbers of units. Nine mutalists so far, and that's against seven stalkers and eight sentries. Definitely enough anti air for him, at least for now, to make it work. But the question remains, will Mana survive long enough to take on his opponent's army or at least eliminate the structures? And he might not be able to do that. Bly has still 600 minerals. He can build additional hatches if he wants. He has 10 harvesters against Mana's 4. And Mana is revealed. Mana is completely revealed. He won't be able to win a race against uh, his opponent because we have one base to the left side, a Roach Warren being built. And the one thing that Bly could do any second now is just, for example, go up here or even up there and just build another hatch. Just build a quick hatch here, try to make that work. And his buildings are already being eliminated. You can see up there we do not have a whole lot left for mana. And he is just trying to move across that map. But another hatch has already been built for Bly down here. Mana might not even double check his position. He already took the down earlier. He might not even go down there and have a look at that. And yeah, mana is going to lose this game unless Bly makes some horrible mistakes there. So it looks like the Ukraine is back to business. Mana with a great game against Dimaga opening game today but in game number two he struggles against his opponent he struggles against Bly is now trying to slowly walk back with his units but these are the last two structures that we see for mana he's going to be eliminated he won't be able to move back with this army in time this is game ladies and gentlemen Bly with a victory against mana is able to make it work actually mana is just going to build uh, an assimilator down here but the, the problem remains he cannot neglect the assimilator or he will just be uh, right clicked and he won't be able to take down two bases that start mining and with every drone mining it's only a matter of time until we have Bly with a much much bigger army. He's already looking at 47 army supply against 47. Bly has the resources to build another base anywhere on this map and that's what Mana is currently looking for. Never check the base down here though. 
drones are mining there and Bly isn't even building army units. He's just, he's at this point really just mining with his army. Mutalists are once again having a quick look, moving in, uh, being like, well, let's see if I can actually just take down that assimilator. One shot here, one shot there, and that, yeah, War Prism is not going to be enough. Of course he's going to drop it now, but the Roaches, they are going to move in, and once the Roaches are in position, there's not a whole lot that that uh, you can, can, can kill a couple of harvests from the high ground, I guess. And that's going to be pretty awesome. But the Mutalists might just move in and take on the War Prism. That's what they should do. That's all that they have to do. Because this base down here is still mining. And it's not like Bly is relying on this base alone. So the Mutalists are starting to move back. Starting to snipe that War Prism. And, well, are they getting it? War Prism! Ah, close call. But he's able to, at least for now, make that work. Here comes the rest of the army. He's just going to right-click that uh, assimilator while going straight. He can't just take down the stalkers, actually. And that will limit the Antia of Mana even more. Mana thinks this is the last base. He doesn't even know there's another base for Blight. And, well, that assimilator goes down. This is the only one that he has. The game is over, and Blight ties the series up. It's a 1-1. Mana eliminated. The Ukrainian player forces out the second place.